Some of you may be wondering why we don't get more things done inside of our chateau. Our answer? If you're thinking 40 acres is a lot for just two people to handle, you'd be correct. Oftentimes we're run down trying to get it all done, but we wouldn't change a thing. We really enjoy the challenge, obviously, or we're just slightly insane. So people uh, often ask us why we bought such a large piece of land if it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. Because we wanted to. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> You grew up in New, New York, York City. City. Yeah. I grew up on the, the mean streets of Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I grew up in suburban Connecticut, and then we lived in cities in apartments. Having this opportunity was amazing. We've had some terrible neighbors over the years. He's a famous photographer, a fetish photographer, and he would hold wild parties and come home at four o'clock in the morning and bang on the floor and have <laughs> film sex parties and stuff. The only noise we hear now is from the birds or a tractor driving by. Fortunately, we can let several of our fields grow until June, which is roughly 20 acres. Our neighbor comes and cuts the grass for hay. The other areas Lincoln can handle with the tractor. This was filmed last June when we were in the middle of a terrible drought. You are not supposed to be in the garden, Enzo. How could you say no to a three-legged dog? I don't, I don't know. continues between the orchard and walled garden. There are still some unstable trees to fell, but we're really thrilled with the progress. The next phase will be solar panels on the side of the barn facing the orchard. So we're out here trying to corral the donkeys. They're getting much too fat. We're trying to get them to come on the other side of this fence. Uve has been known to jump the fences. Right, Uvea? Do you want the carrots to lure them, Lincoln? Oh, no, you should do that so I can put the thing up. Okay, come on, donkeys. It's not like calling a dog. <laughs> <laughs> come on, donkeys. Hi, Uvea. Well, Uvea's on the right side, isn't she? No, Dominic isn't. Dominic is always the troublemaker. Uvea. Uvea. What is that, a carrot? No one is tempted by my delicious carrots. This grass is just doing it for them, I guess. Here, Uvea. She's running away from me like I'm going to do something to her. Come on. There you go. It's delicious. Dominic. Uvea got a carrot and you didn't. Dominic, come around the corner. He's literally like a foot away from, here he comes. Okay, now Lincoln's gonna try to, there we go, a carrot for you. I know Uvea won't be happy about the field being closed because she really enjoys her time out in the field. But they're just, they're, this grass is just too rich for them. Uh, 
Yeah, you need a pole. Yeah. She's going to jump over that. So my job is to disconnect the wires so Lincoln doesn't electrocute himself. Okay, so I have to get stakes for the fence. Our property is great because we have outbuildings. I mean, who wouldn't want several structures to store things like this? And I can't believe I'm letting you see this. This is a mess. All right, I got the stakes. It comes like him. I need to buy um, fly spray for them. And those are not dandelions in the field. Those are little yellow wildflowers. So I'm here looking for donkey spray this store you'll find everything like camping, swimming, cycling, horseback riding. You'll also find the iconic Breton striped shirt originally worn by sailors, making it easy for them to be spotted if they've gone overboard. So this is what I need. This is all the equestrian gear. So this is where I get, I call it donkey deodorant but it's a roll-on and uh, the donkeys much prefer this to a big spray bottle. They run away when I try to spray them. So this is not as practical, but it's the only thing that works and it's seven euros. So I get a couple of them and um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm standing where part of the driveway used to be. The driveway used to go around the entire chateau. We didn't need a driveway going through the front of the, the chateau. We just created an eating area in front and that's been really great. I bought these three pots and have finally gotten around to buying some trees to put in them. This is sort of a temporary fix until the grass completely grows and then we can figure out what else we want to put here. I don't know, maybe we'll keep these, maybe we won't. I'm not really sure. I was going to continue planting, but it's just started to rain now and um, I need to gather my things up. Uh, the weather has been really typical of Brittany today. It's been rainy and then sunny. I can see sunshine in the distance. So this is typical weather for here. My gloves are going to get wet. There. Everything's a work in progress. It's just nice to have the space. So we're standing in an adjacent field that we own. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't do anything with this yet. Uh, no. We make uh, hay. <laughs> we make hay. Yay. <laughs> hey. um, so the property goes sort of beyond the tree line or? To the far side of the tree. To the, the trees. far side yeah. of the tree line. So to my left is our park. Right. And that's where the chateau is. Right. Yeah, this piece of property just sits. Once it's mowed, it's nice. I don't know. What are we going to do with it? I don't know. Um, it's ours to decide. Maybe a big um, water park or something. <laughs> it's nice to have, and we could build something here um, at some point. A vacation cottage. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a pretty view of the, the fields in front of us. Yeah, it's about five acres. I five think. acres. Yeah. We could build a, we could subdivide it and... Yeah. Um... <laughs> you probably put about 50 houses 50 on it. <laughs>
Mimi the Chateau Cat has acclimated seamlessly into a relaxed and happy indoor cat, even though her nose is a bit disfigured from cancer. None of the other cats have even mentioned it. She's getting along quite well with Fluffy and Waffle, and she'll meet the other three cats in due time. So what we do know is that we have several cats that we're feeding. Um, we set up two wildlife cameras. We have one in a barn over near the orchard and then a barn over here. Unfortunately, one of the wildlife cameras we purchased stopped working, so I had to return it. I've upgraded to the better quality one that we have in the other barn. So we finally received the trap for the cats that I ordered about two weeks ago. Um, it came from Germany and it took an incredibly long time to get here. I'm not sure why, but we have the trap. So the next step is to put the trap in the barn with food inside without it being set so they get used to going in and out of the, the, the trap, the cage. So I had some advice from uh, somebody that I know locally and also one of our viewers who happens to be a veterinarian and they were quite helpful. We've been emailing. So I was given some great um, advice and instruction on how to actually go about trapping the cats. I wanted to make sure the cats didn't get hurt. I wanted to educate myself on how to do this the proper way. So hopefully by next week, we will have some kitties that we've caught and see if they are maybe stray or feral if they are stray. Hopefully we can rehome them. Thank you again for the amazing donations. So your donations have helped by the wildlife cameras and the trap and um, will next be their medical needs. So I'll give you another update as soon as we catch something. Of course, I want to bring them all inside my house, but I know that's not possible because my family will kill me. So this is the barn that seems to be most popular with the cats. And here we have our camera set up. Probably see me.
So this is the trap that just arrived last night. Now it's a little bigger than I expected. I mean, I, I measured it out, but oh, I think stuck. it's stuck. So I was thinking the cats might get freaked out by a tinier um, enclosure, no? I don't know. Well, anyway, now we can catch uh, dogs and <laughs> um, foxes and uh, giraffes. This thing is big enough. You can fit in there. This it's is special food. Special food. Fish drops, 100% success. I think I got the strong model, not the basic model. Okay. Okay, this is all in German, so we're going to have to translate this. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Didn't you take German and Yes, I did. School? I did take some German. Yes. Okay, so we can catch an otter, a duck. What's a duck? A dog. What is that? A badger. So we can catch an otter, a fox, a der martyr. I don't know what a der martyr is. A der iltis. Sorry if you, we have any German viewers. I'm totally a wolf. Der wolf. Dear They're wolf. nurse. Oh, and they show what kind They're of poops bigger. they make, too. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> is, I always I wanted know, to know that. I don't know if you can see this, but here. <laughs> here. It shows you the kind of poop they make. So I guess you know what is coming into your garden. Sorry if that's too graphic, but it's interesting. Um... Okay, anyway, we can catch a variety of animals. So, okay, so hopefully um, next week we can catch some kitties. Yeah. I hope yeah, we yeah. don't catch a der wolf. <laughs> der wolf. Der wolf. Der wolf. Der, der, or der nurse. Like, they don't show like a cat. Va like Wagner. Wolf. Wolf. Der, der wolf. Enzo, this is what... This is... This is what Enzo has been rolling in. This. <laughs> this. I don't know if you can see. Enzo loves to roll in the der Fuk. Is it Fuchs or Fuk? Do you pronounce the S in German? Yeah, Fuchs. I def I'm, again, I apologize. Der to Fuchs. Der, der Fuchs. But um, Enzo likes to roll in this, and that's why... Look at him. He stinks. Did you roll in Der Fuchs poop? <laughs> <laughs> he did. He needs a bath. <laughs> All right. So next time, hopefully we have a cat in there. A little kitty cat. Okay. A big cat would be bad. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have something to say, leave us a comment.